Hello everyone, Anthony Sequera here with StormwindLive.com. I got another email from a friend over at the Cisco Learning Network. Saeed asked me, Anthony, could you elaborate for us in one of your video blogs on the transport layer? It seems like I'm just fine when it comes to the physical data link and network layer, but the minute I hit that layer four, the minute I hit that transport layer, I start struggling on exactly what is the purpose of that layer. Well, here we can see our OSI model. Here you can see our groupings of popular things that we're gonna see at each of the models like layers like IP at the network layer, UDP and TCP at the transport layer. But as far as its functionality goes, you can see one of the things it's gonna do for us is session multiplex. Now that sounds awfully fancy. What exactly does that mean? Well, think about how you like to use your web browsers today. You're not just going to sit here at cisco.com, no way. In addition to that, you're gonna have your Twitter feed running and you're gonna be looking at all your tweets for the day. You're gonna go over to Facebook and you're gonna go ahead and update your wall with the latest goings on in your life. Folks, this is what session multiplexing is all about. You can see that in one application, we're doing a lot of different requests of the internet. Something else that we're gonna be doing typically today on our systems is we're gonna be using a lot of different applications that are accessing internetwork resources. How is all of that data gonna be kept straight? How's it gonna be delivered to the correct application? That's the job of the transport layer as well. Also, it's gonna chop up the data and apply the appropriate PDU headers to give us segments. So we refer to segmentation as taking place here. Also notice that things like flow control and connection oriented communications and even reliability, those can all be jobs of the transport layer, but we notice here it says when required. What's up with that? Well, it turns out that when it comes to sending data via the transport layer, we've got a couple of options. We can send data reliably or in a best effort type manner. We like to refer to this as connection oriented or connectionless. We'll use the transmission control protocol when we need that reliability. And when we don't, we'll use UDP. Just to give you a sense for the reliability components here, notice there'll be with transmission control control protocol, there will be an attempt to keep the particular packets in order. With UDP, it really doesn't matter. The packets can show up in order or out of order. The protocol UDP itself doesn't care. So that's connectionless communications. Also here, notice that certain applications are going to prefer or are going to be designed to utilize either connection oriented or connectionless. Things like email and file sharing and download apps, they're gonna be interested in that reliability. But when we get to things like voice streaming and video streaming, those apps, they want efficiency. They don't want reliability per se. We'll build in other mechanisms in the application like buffering to take care of the lack of reliability. Well, that's the transport layer in all of its glory. To make sure this information is really sticking for you, let's wrap up with a quick polling question out of our course. Transmission control protocol is best for which two of the following applications? Email, voice streaming, downloading, or video streaming? What do you think? What would be best for transmission control protocol here? Yeah, great work. It's gonna be email and it's gonna be downloading as perfect examples of applications that can really benefit from the beauty of reliability at the transport layer. 
Well, folks, thank you so much for attending this Cisco video blog. Keep your requests coming to anthony at stormwind.com, and I'll see you over at stormwindlive.com for more great live video-based Cisco training.